just 17 months after the most excellent Star Wars Jedi Survivor from EA and Respawn, Ubisoft's Star Wars Outlaws is here promising an open world adventure in the galaxy far, far away. Now this is gonna sound weird, but Outlaws feels like the love child of Red Dead Redemption and, please bear with me on this, but Ubisoft's Watch Dogs. Okay, whoa, whoa, I can explain, but first, I need to give you a quick idea of what Star Wars Outlaws is all about. Indy 5, I found the back entrance. I'm going in. That's what she said! <laughs> Hold on. Set between The Empire Strikes Back and Return of the Jedi, Star Wars Outlaws is a third-person open-world adventure game starring Kay Vess, a young scoundrel raised on the streets of Cantobite's worker district. You remember Cantobite, right? The gambling town from The Last Jedi, the one with the, uh, Girafalama races. Accompanied by Nyx, her adorable pet sidekick, Kay ends up in hot water by stealing from a very bad dude, literally launching her out into the galaxy to navigate new worlds, towns, and shady organizations. And, to save her bantha bacon, Kay Vess has to assemble a team of crafty criminals for a huge heist. So, not the most original idea for a scoundrel story then, but this is a video game, so there's more to it than just that. I do want to say though that as a main character, Kay is pretty likable, and something I really appreciate is that the game hasn't been bogged down by some form of morality system for the most part. It's freeing to know that you're a scoundrel, you're pretty much in it for survival, and you're not tasked with choosing which way to play the character. In fact, decisions are more likely to ask you who to screw over, and that's great. Unlike other ultra-massive open-world Ubisoft games like Assassin's Creed Valhalla or Odyssey, the Star Wars Outlaw story can be completed in roughly 25 to 30 hours, with longer playthroughs for completionists going up into the 60s. A range of familiar game mechanics make up the Outlaws experience, and none are particularly groundbreaking, but the combination and execution works really well. I raced and jumped my speeder bike through canyons and high-speed chases, I've had massive gunfights on the ground, and dogfights in debris fields in space. Snuck into compounds and hacked terminals, platformed and climbed through crashed starships, played card games and gambled on farther erasers, and all somehow without ever feeling like I was just checking off open world boxes. Despite allowing myself to get distracted by a fair amount of side tasks and the game being set in an open world, I'm surprised at just how crafted and organic the entire Star Wars Outlaws experience has felt. It's obviously no Call of Duty, but ranged combat is actually better than I expected after seeing some pre-release gameplay footage that got me worried. You even use many weapons by picking them up and then discarding them during combat, making weapons fun to use but never tasking you with managing more than you need to. There's actually also a lot of sneaking around in Outlaws, and at times I feel like maybe a little too much. Certain mechanics seem to have purposefully been kept light, such as being able to knock out guards, but not complicating things by even giving you the option to hide bodies. And if there's actually one thing that bothers me, it's that Kay continually knocks people out by punching them in the helmet with her hand. It's just kind of dumb when something like a taser or at least a little baton like Aiden used in Watch Dogs would have made much more sense. And this brings me to my earlier statement about Watch Dogs. Nyx, your pet and partner in crime, isn't just adorable, but very handy as well. You can send Nyx off to distract a guard, cause an explosion, open a door. Sound familiar? Yes, you use Nyx in a very similar way to how you might use your smartphone and hacking in Watch Dogs. So, I'm not saying it feels like Star Wars Watch Dogs, but there's some of its DNA there. Keeping mechanics balanced and light also applies to progression, loot, equipment, crafting, and trading systems, making it feel like everything you're collecting is working towards obtaining new abilities, upgrades, and equipment, but without ever feeling too complicated. Spaceflight in combat is fairly straightforward and mostly sticks to some basic pew pew and missile lock on combat with some scanning and resource gathering and jumping to other planets. Something I really appreciated though is that you can go from walking into your ship on one planet to walking out onto another planet after a hyperspace jump without a single loading screen and feeling like you were a part of the process. Sure, there are some hidden loading screens in the mix and you don't do much in the process, but the game keeps you in the mix so that it feels like it was one seamless trip. Something that a game like Starfield and all of its loading screens could have really benefited from. I mentioned earlier that Kay Vess isn't bogged down by morality. The Syndicate reputation system is actually awesome in this regard, because instead of deciding if you should do something good or evil, you get options to do fun stuff, like I said earlier, screw over one Syndicate to gain favor for another, which affects your reputation, and then changes aspects like how welcome you are in certain areas, discounts and items you get at stores, all depending on whose territory you're in. Get in the good books and you get the good stuff, get on someone's naughty list and an area that was once a friendly hangout becomes a challenge to get into. Outlaws features five planets starting on Cantobite's Cantonica and then branches out into a mixture of new or less familiar worlds like the Windy Tashara and the Lasha Kiva, as well as the cold and icy Kijimi featured in the Rise of Skywalker. 
But the most familiar of all is undoubtedly Tatooine and its many memorable Star Wars locations. Make no mistake, Outlaws is a beautiful game. I mentioned before that there are a lot of visual modes available in Star Wars Outlaws. Outlaws on console gives you the option to play in 21x9 cinematic widescreen or in normal 16x9 widescreen mode, as well as performance and quality modes. It also has a 40 frames per second quality mode for those with 120Hz screens, which ended up being my mode of choice and really nails the balance of crisp resolutions and smooth performance. The graphics can get quite iffy at times as well though, with lots of visual noise as well as strange artifacting, tears in geometry and some low resolutions in some areas especially when in performance mode. It's not just about visual horsepower though, the atmosphere in the game is really something else. Whether you're walking into a smoky bar or cruising into a neon lit town at dusk while the wind howls and harasses every inch of the environment. It's also just crazy impressive to walk from an interior full of people right out into a massive open world where you can see for miles. And again with no loading screens or pauses in sight. When you see some of the unique environments and interesting scenarios they've conjured up, you realize that the artists working on Outlaws really brought their A game. So your plan is to run forever? No. I don't know. It's better than dying, right? I see. The same can also be said for the sound and music design department because once again this is an element of Outlaws that has been so beautifully captured and it's noticeable from unique yet familiar sounding musical themes, the haunting sound of speeders crossing the desolate desert and blasters that sound and as a result feel like they're packing a really solid punch. I've really enjoyed my time with Star Wars Outlaws and I can't wait to play even more so do I think it's worth it even at launch price? It's hard to recommend almost any game at full launch price these days. However, if you've watched this far, then I'm going to remind you of a very awesome little fact. If you subscribe to Ubisoft Plus for a month, you can play Star Wars Outlaws without having to fork out full price. So is it worth a one month subscription? Hell yes it is. Whoa! I highly and happily recommend Star Wars Outlaws. At the beginning of the review I asked which you would want to choose between Outlaws and Jedi Survivor, but the truth is that somehow, two Star Wars titles developed by different teams from different publishers have managed to deliver two games that feel like video game siblings. And some of the best Star Wars to come out in the last decade. And that's the review. If you enjoyed the video, please hit the like button to let me know. And don't forget to subscribe and hit the little bell or check out the channel for more videos. Thanks for watching, I'll see you soon.